Hello and welcome back to another episode of It's the Vibe podcast. You are with your host, Megan. I hope you're amazing. I hope you're doing well. I hope as we are counting down to the bloody end of the year, can you believe it? I know uh, um, that you are dealing with the chaotic, silly season um, and also having time to yourself, to rest, to recharge which is exactly what I did this weekend. I didn't have many plans, thankfully. Um, So if you are in my world, you know that I spend Saturdays as what I call my being days where I just be. So Cody wasn't around this weekend. He stayed at home. I was at home um, and it was a really beautiful weekend of just catching up with my fam. I spent some time with my dad. I did like something that I've been waiting to do for like the longest time. I just went and got a new phone. <laughs> like it's just those small things where I just kind of like, even if it's life admin, it just is like so good to tick it off the to-do list. So that was amazing. And I, um, and just my sleeping rituals or like patterns are just out of this world at the moment. Like last week I was seeing 222, like I would literally wake up at 222. This week it seems to be 333. So look, being the woo-woo gal that I am, I love a good angel number, but I don't love them as much at 222 in the morning or at 333 in the morning. But anyway, It's fine. Uh, And then Sunday, um, I had the most productive work day I have had in the longest time. I feel like my weeks just are better when I do like Friday, no, Sunday to like Friday afternoon. The Friday afternoon, my brain is just absolutely had it. It's been getting up at 4 a.m. or whatever time I choose to wake up. Um, been doing really long days and I put quite a lot of demand on my poor brain and my poor mind. So by then we're sort of ready to go, which is why Saturday is the perfect being day. So uh, side note to this, nothing to do with what I'm talking about today. Well, I guess it does a little bit. Um, what kind of schedule that works for you? Because again, Monday to Friday doesn't suit me because I feel like by Monday, like half my week's gone. So make a routine that suits you. A little tip for the day. Okay, so what are we talking about today, Megs? Shut up. We are talking about starting your side biz and making money. And why am I talking about that right now? It's because literally you can start a side business or just don't even call it a side business. Start a business and make money today. Everyone I see every second Instagram reel I see is all about making money online, doing all these things. And I am so fucking here for it because I think that, you know, whether you are trying to create a business that one day allows you to work for yourself or you just want to make a little bit of extra money or even if it's just like a creative hobby, you just need to pursue those passions. You need to pursue what it is you're feeling called to. And I tell you, it has never been as easy as it is like today. It's so so, so easy. And it just becomes overwhelming because I feel like we get thrown all these information and all of these terms and all these like bits and pieces, like you have to do this, you have to think about this, you need this strategy. But no, you don't, right? Do you need a little bit of strategy? Of course. And I'm going to run you through that today. But what you do need is just a shit ton of passion for what you're doing, bit of motivation, bit of self-discipline, mix that all in there together and you are going to be unstoppable and removing any beliefs you have around the fact that you can't do it or that it's not going to be as big as you want it to be or like whatever, because what I have found is I've never doubted myself more than what I have when I started working for myself, which is why you put like plans in place to like circumvent that. Hello, masterminds. (laughs) Anyway, why I feel I can very confidently talk about this is because my side biz, what was my side biz is now my full-time income, right? And again, whether you're new to my world or you have been around for a while, you'd be like, yeah, cool, Megs, but you know marketing. So yes, I know marketing, but even if I didn't, Do you know what I do have is the ability to fucking figure out anything because it is all in our minds with tools like Google and chat GPT. People are literally building businesses overnight, selling their first product within a couple of hours. So why not you as well? Like, why can't we just break it down to simple little action steps to then go and create whatever it is of your dreams? And I'll tell you, I literally created another, what I'm calling a side biz now because that's my business is more than full time. I wanted to sell apparel. I had an idea that I wanted a, um, which I'm 
realizing now as this is coming out of my mouth that I'm talking about this and we haven't launched it yet. So Ellie, apologies in advance, but you know what? We'll deal with it. You'll she'll deal with it. <laughs> I wanted I wanted a power break. I wanted cute slogan tees for myself because I fucking love a good slogan tee and I have a billion of them, but they're all just like old and like whatever. I needed a wardrobe refresh. So I was like, well, this is a gap because I can't find a good one that I want. That resonates with me. That speaks of me and my personality. So I created it. And I shit you not, between like the tools I use, what I use, Shopify, um, I used Canva, I used a um, an app plugin for Shopify called Printify, uh, I used Clavio, right? All these tools cost me bugger all. Like I think all up to start and run this apparel line, it cost, maybe cost me like a hundred bucks. And that's for the domain, the email address the website, the design, the, like everything, hundred bucks, literally. And I created it within like a couple of hours. And <laughs> I mean, Ellie, to be fair, it's done the rest. However, if I had the time, dedication and energy to put to it, like it's just amazing. So again, quick side note, it's the vibe apparel is a thing. <laughs> I'm going to pop the link to our store in the show notes, vibey stuff we have cool tees we have cool hoodies and we have super cool journals as well so there you go I'll talk more about that that's for the worst launch I've ever done in my whole life so you know whatever so it's easy for you to do if I can do it trust me you can do it and when I first started my business I was like okay cool like why am I doing this and again it's all about freedom it's all about flexibility and I wanted to make money I wanted to make my own money doing my own thing with in the, the time frames that I wanted to do it on my own schedule, doing the things I love to do. And I have been a bloody entrepreneur <laughs> since I can remember. So I would make my family pay for dance concerts that I'll put on singing concerts, you name it, making bracelets, painting rocks, dog walking. They were all of the start of like this entrepreneurial version of myself. I didn't realize I was morphing into from such a young age. I then moved into a billion other different ways. I like, you know, as I got older to make money, I wanted to work for myself on my own time and then money doing it and having fun. So I had an accessories business. I have obviously done my coaching services when I was working full time. You know, I found these things so easy to come in terms of inspiration, but it's the execution factor that is, you know, is tricky because it's like, cool, I've got this killer idea. I've done the market research. There's nothing like it. There's a gap in the market. There's a whatever. And then you're just like, okay, cool. Like what next? What do I do? So if you're all about flexibility, additional income, developing your skills and personal growth, then my loves, this episode is for you. This is the longest pre frame episode I've ever done, but here we are. Uh, I also have a very special bonus office. Oh. I have a very special bonus offer um, for listeners, uh, like for my podcast listeners. So stick around to the end because I'm going to give you 50% off of something which you may have seen, um, but it is super powerful. And the what I the sessions that I have run thus far, um, I literally walk away absolutely buzzing from. It's just the best thing ever. So you want to start a side business, right? Like I said before, either you want to scale something that you can work for yourself. You want a bit of extra money, like, hello, look at the economic times at the moment, or you just want a creative outlet. Okay. So you don't know where to start. What do we do? So I read Amy Porterfield's book, Two Weeks Notice, and I loved these questions that she notes to ask yourself. And these questions are, what am I good at? What do I love? What can I be paid for? And what does the world need? Like my perfect example before of I wanted cute as fuck slogan tees that had the most out there sayings on them were hot pink, you know, <laughs> just like real Meg's vibes. I couldn't find what I wanted. So I created it. And I'm sure you have all of these problems in your life that you know in your mind you could create a solution for. But again, you're just not too sure what the next steps are. And this is the best way to do it because believe me, when you've had a long day, at work or a long day, whatever, or you're feeling like shit or you're tired or you've got plans on the weekend, unless you love what you're creating or have insane amount of willpower, it is a slog. So it's also great to do some market research. So who else is out there doing what you're doing? How are they doing it? Take a look at the actions and see if it aligns with you. So if you have an idea about a particular business that you want to create, research the shit out of it, right? Research it like you're 
researching holidays on YouTube and you're watching influencer vlogs, traveling around the places you want to be, put yourself inside the mind of those people running those businesses and see if it aligns. Is this something you would look to do? Is this something you're going to get value from doing? Is this something that's going to add to your life? And if so, buddy, go for it. Outside of market research. And again, I am not a business coach. I am but someone who has done this and these are the steps that looking back, I probably would have appreciated a little bit of a framework around how I would go about starting a business. Um, and it's really, really outlined. So the key elements uh, for a very, what I'm going to call basic business plan uh, are as follows. So you need an executive summary. So really brief description of your business concept. So again, it could be anything. And I have some examples that I'm going to give to you at the end as well, because I was like, I could chat GPT, 50 side businesses to start today. But my mind, as tired as she is, we can come up with some. So let's see how we go. <laughs> um, now you need to highlight your unique selling proposition. So this is one of those fluffy terms that basically means what is your point of difference? And the beauty of the way that the Instagram algorithm is working at the minute is that we are really moving into our behind the scenes era. We are moving into show us your personality kind of businesses. We have and I won't call it a saturation, but there are so many people out there doing exactly what I'm telling you to do. So you need to put yourself out there. You need to be able to, you know, declare and understand what your point of difference is in your market and sell your personality, sell your brand and let people see you. It seems daunting at the start, but it's so much fun. It is so much fun. And you need to outline your goals and objectives. So if you have a goal that you want to make X amount of dollars or an objective of, you know, having a business that supports your family within six months, whatever that may be, write it down and don't be realistic with this stuff either. Aim high with us, right? Next, you need a business description. So you here is where you want to provide a little bit more detail of the overview of your business. So you need to do things like define the products or services you offer and do it in a way that makes sense. And you're going to be like, well, obviously, duh. But if you don't understand it and you're not clear on it, your audience sure as shit are not going to be. So get super clear and start small too. This is the only time I'll ever, 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 ever tell you to play small, start small, is if you have a particular product or service you want to bring to life, just focus on nailing one or two things and absolutely repeat refine repeat refine repeat refine until you get it down pat and then add some more stuff in and explain your motivation for starting the business okay that is really coming back to the simple thing oh that's that feeling aspect that you can inject into it right so why did I do this what feeling does it give me you know why do I jump out of bed earlier in the morning to be able to do a couple of hours on my business before I go to my job that is going to push you through the hard times. Let me give you the hot tip. Now, I touched on this briefly before, but market analysis. So identify your target market and its characteristics. So this is less about competitors. This is more about your target audience. And the beautiful world of social media, we can find everyone at any stage, anywhere and solve their problems. <laughs> okay, we can um, have conversations with, you know, strangers on the other side of the world. We can do anything with these tools. And it really is about identifying that target market. And when you start to do things like build a website or create social media content or whatever it is, speak to that market, solve their problems for them, tell them how you're going to do it. And then that way your message is not being lost in you trying to speak to too many people on time. Right now, the next part of market analysis is analyzing, obviously, your industry and competition. And I like to think of it less as like analyzing, but kind of like getting the vibe for. Surprise, surprise. <laughs> so who out there is your competition? How are they doing it? What are they doing? And put yourself in your consumer's shoes. You know, if it's a particular brand that might be a little bit, you know, out there or too out there or too, you know, whatever it is, don't do what they're doing. If it doesn't feel aligned, if it doesn't feel right, if you can't put yourself in your target audience's shoes and think to yourself, you know what, that was not how I would want to be marketed to, then you've already got a great answer, okay? And also highlighting any trends that may affect your business. So I can give you, again, really quick, simple kind of like, like we've just gone through Black Friday, right? If you are a product-based business, even service-based business, fucking everyone was getting into Black Friday this year, that's a trend that will affect your business not being able to post things after whatever date the Australia Post cutoff is at the end of this year, that's going to affect your business. 
other key dates, like, um, you know, if there's public holidays that affects some business, you, like all of these kind of things, just so you can kind of like preempt, not only actually a way to put together some fun content in order to drive people back to your website so that it continues their kind of their journey, um, but also so, yeah, you just prepared. And the next thing I think you should do is organization and management. So outline the structure of your business. So you have to do really boring things like get an ABN and like do all this other stuff, but have kind of like a structure in mind. Like, are you just going to run this thing solo or, you know, you're going to do it with your partner, with your friend, with whomever, and then introducing key team members and their roles as your business will grow. And then any external advisors or mentors. And this one, I cannot recommend enough right? External advisors that are outside of your immediate circle, that are outside of your zone of influence, that are outside with that knowledge and that experience and that understanding and already have those learnings, you get where you want to go so much faster because they've already done it. And they can help you navigate those challenges so much more easily. And it doesn't have to be this huge, big, high paid, you know, business coach that's 10 grand a month and you know whatever it literally can be youtube videos on the internet of someone like gary b you know there are so many people out there giving you so much value for not a lot of money but you know we it's just so underutilized so utilize everything everyone around you and seek out mentors you know people are more than happy to I find typically to share what they know with you so you know there's no harm in asking you know if you look up to somebody in business that you know even if you don't know them again people are often there to help you and if you see this high ticket business coach that you want to work with I guarantee you that they've got like a bunch of freebie offers to get you into their world go and do them first and then as you scale up obviously you need can considerably more resources and support around your business then but that's the time to do it not when you're first starting out now the next item which I touched on again previously is your products or services so detail what you're offering and highlight the features and benefits of your products or services so features and benefits are really underlooked People want to tell you everything about their product. I, it's, you know, this and it's this and it's this. It's revolutionary. It's right. All these stupid words, innovation, blah, whatever. How's it going to solve my problem? How is it going to benefit my life? What are the particular features of your product that is literally going to be beneficial to my life? What are the features of your service that are going to be of benefit to my life? You need to explain that and you need to explain it bloody quick because our um, attention span, she's getting shorter and shorter every single, I'm going to say week probably. And also explain how your offerings meet the needs of your target market as well. So it's not just about here it is, buy this, best thing ever, it'll do this. How specifically can you solve a problem that I'm having? And how do you allow me to identify that I've even got that problem? That's the key. And that's really, really powerful. Now, the next thing in your business strategy, business plan is marketing and sales. No surprise. This is my favorite part. (laughs) It is my favorite part ever. And it is also, and again, this is completely biased opinion, but whatever. I feel like it is the kind of biggest pillar in, you know, all these other business pieces pieces. That's a big statement, but you know what? We're wrong with it. It's fine. So marketing strategy and do not let this make you think that you have to create some whopping spreadsheet full of like this and this. That's not what we're talking about here. I'm talking like download Notion. It's free. Ship, do it in the back end of Facebook. You can schedule out posts, right? Identify key dates that are coming up and um, curate your content based on those things have you got a sale coming up create content on that and literally you can do month by month and I'm not even joking right now you can do month by month and then again whether you're an in-service um sorry you're a service in person an online service obviously that will be different your strategy if you have a product versus a service that will be different as well but keep looking at different ways And if you look at marketing and a strategy and what it does, it's how do I reach the most amount of people? How do I have the biggest impact? (laughs) And when is the best time to hit them? Literally, like it's so simple that when you say like, oh, this marketing strategy, I don't run a marketing strategy. Very rarely will I put together a marketing strategy. One, because like 
uh, here's a good one. The Optus like whole scam thing. I that day had a particular media day booked for a client of mine where we had Channel 7, Channel 9, um, you know, and a couple of big outlets coming to interview my client for his business. That Optus thing broke and, and it got cancelled, right? Your best laid plans can be, can, and I like this was booked like probably, I don't know, it was a while back, you know, before obviously the day. So there was quite a lot of planning and preparation that went into it. And it was literally for nothing in the end. And it still hasn't rehappened yet. <laughs> okay. So don't go too far out where you're like, this has to happen at this time and this strategy. And I'm not pivoting from this strategy. You need to pivot. You need to be very flexible because shit is going to come up. I know I'm going to waffle on this particular part, but I'm going to try and make it sure. I promise you, I just can't help it. The next thing you want to do in your marketing and sales plan is identify your sales channel and methods. Okay, and they may, may be a, like array of things depending on obviously what you're offering. So if it's a service, obviously you have things like website, you have things like Instagram, you have things like Facebook and all of those things. If it's a product, same thing, you have a website, but you can do, um, you know, pop-up stalls and things, right? So identify your sales strategy, uh, sorry, your sales channels and methods based off of where your audience are going to be. And then define your pricing strategy. So this one is obviously key. People have a tendency to go into business and they're like, you know what, I'm brand new. I'm charging, you know, minimal this or I'm going to do it for free. Now, there's a lot to be said for getting experience and uh, working with people in order to get things like testimonials or whatever and to gain that confidence and gain, you know, your skill, master your craft, if you will. However, it is quite another thing to get to the point where you're like, mate, I've done this for six months. I'm still doing shit for free. Um, and, you know, people won't value things as much if they don't pay for it. That's proven. So anything like raising your prices and doing all that is so uncomfortable because it's literally putting a dollar figure on our worth. How much is an hour with me worth? How much is an hour with you worth, right? It's all relative. Don't overdo it. Don't overthink it. Again, that market research is really, really good there. Competitor analysis. And just because one person who has done it for the same amount of time as you um, is charging X amount that you should do the same, no. You need to see what feels good for you. And again, your USP and if you've done your marketing right will be of higher value. The next and uh, look, it's probably just as crucial as your marketing and sales <laughs> <laughs> there's your financial plan so I am obviously talking about projections um you know and if you want to get really into the nitty-gritty and I to be fair I did actually enjoy this part was like sales forecasting and expense budgeting and like cash flow statements and stuff like that obviously when you're starting out you just don't even have to worry about that stuff but just keep a track of what you're spending on your business how much you're making real basic stuff like that and if you are going to require funding for your business you know is it a large-scale business that you're going to require a loan what are the repayments going to be on that how are you going to fund that and so on and so forth or if it's a service-based business obviously startup costs are significantly lower so again when you start to hit different thresholds of um, revenue on your business what are you going to start doing with that money how are you going to reinvest that in yourself so that you're providing even more value to your clients so just something to sort of think about and then the next part of our business plan is an operational plan. Now, how will I operate on a day-to-day -day basis? And I'll give you a bloody good example because I've been caught out here before. When I launched my accessories business, that perfect edition, right? Launched the website, did the socials, did the whole thing, started getting orders, but I was working full-time at the time. Now, when you're working full-time and I wasn't working from home, I was working in an office. So obviously the post falls outside of my um, the hours, obviously it's like nine to five or whatever the post I was open to. I was working later at the side and I couldn't get out of my lunch break. So I was sending orders late. I, you know, and all the, just these things that you just need to think about. And it's just like operating on a day-to-day -day basis when you've got all of your life to fit into this. And because you're calling this a side biz or whatever it is, this needs to take a priority if, if this is going to be something that you're going to want to do long-term. And again, it's like that, um, you know, why I use my Sundays and still, I still do it because I'm just so set up for the week. And it is an operational um, need of me, of my business at the moment to be able to do that. And outlining that to your customers and communicating that to your customers or your clients, and you're getting your, um, I guess, your service delivery process down pat. So 
suppliers or partners, you know, software, all of that stuff that is so critical, um, you know, especially again, and I'm not going to go into detail here because this is like a super high level summary that I've already talked too much about. But it's things like if you're going to have a website, what are you going to host it on? If you're going to do things like, you know, yeah, like my example before, if you're going to post stuff out and what what days you're going to do posting, do you have to communicate about all those sorts of things that will start to unravel as you kind of like think through it a little bit more. So it's just being planned. That's all it is, is being prepared. And then you can do a SWOT analysis. So if you don't know what a SWOT analysis is, it is an acronym for strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats. So you can consider internal and external factors here. So, you know, with a side business in particular, you can think of things like, you know, your full-time job getting in the way, your family getting in the way, your kids getting in the way, you know, you whatever getting in the way. But then also internally how you're going to manage the conflict or the kind of guilt feelings that come up when you're missing stuff to work on your business, right? To me, they are just as much of a threat as like a bloody competitor coming in and undercutting your prices, for example. Um, And how are you going to mitigate those risks? So if you highlight the potential risk to your business, obviously you can make a plan on how to mitigate them. That's the best way to do it. And you know, you kind of got to go a bit grim for this. You kind of go, oh, this could come up and this could come up, this could come. It all could, 100% it could. So, how are you going to mitigate it if it does? That's all it is. And then, my final kind of business planning like idea is um, a timeline. So key milestones and goals, and then break down your plan into manageable phases. So obviously at the start, when you have an idea, it's so fun. You've got this animation, you're running, you're running with it. It's like so exciting. You may get some samples and you're like, holy shit, this is a thing. Then you've got to build your website and you're like, oh my God, yes, I'm building a website. And then you get to a point where you're like, well, why won't my GA4 connect to the back end of my Shopify account? Why can't I create post-purchase emails in Clavio because my Shopify integration hasn't worked properly? Okay, and I'm throwing these things at you because it's just things you need to not like, I guess, come understand that you're going to come up against. And instead of just being like, uh, you know what, it's too, I'm not going to worry about it. It's like Google it, chat GPT it, do whatever the hell you have to do. Just keep going. And just remember the goal of a simple business plan is just to provide a clear roadmap for your site biz, right? Keep a focus, realistic, but just tailored to you specifically in your journey. So there is a quick wrap up. It wasn't really quick, it blown out anyway, of a business plan. So other key factors you need to kind of think in as you introduce a side business into your life is time management. And I'm going to sugarcoat this one because it is tough. <laughs> okay, so you either need to get up earlier or stay up later or say no to things. If it's the priority, it will take up space in your life. So my advice is to create the space because it feels significantly less forced if you created the space before the new thing comes in. Because then it's not like, holy shit, how do I do life? I'm overwhelmed. Like, what am I going to do? And, you know, you get to it. My other key piece of advice is take messy action. Take any action. Like, often when I would just sit on my laptop waiting for inspo to, like, hit me in the face because I had no idea what my next step was. And I was like, what am I going to do next? And literally, I would open my laptop up and I'd be like, okay, cool. Like, I might just, you know, tweak this or I might just, like, look at the app. And then all of a sudden, before I knew it, I was like, oh, my God, yes, and then this thing. And then, oh, my God, yes, and then that thing. It leads to another, leads to another, leads to another. And the next thing you know, you're snowballing and in a very positive way to two hours has gone by and you've done a bunch of things. And you're learning constantly about it as well. And the fun part about a DIY kind of, you know, a website build or whatever like that is that you learn so much and you have to learn very bloody quickly. Now, my last piece of advice on this is for the love of all things holy, do not ignore those little nudges. The little comments from people like, oh, you're really good at that. Okay. They say a salary is what your employer pays you to forget your dream, which I disagree. There are a lot of people who love the nine to five, love clocking on, clocking off, doing their thing. It works for them. And that's amazing. That way I used to be one of those people. Okay. But there's, then there's other people who's like, feel those little nudge and there's like, oh, I'd like to do that. Or see, you know, somebody's candle making business I think, oh, I, I, I could do that. Or, you know, hear something like, you know, maybe the fact that I was trying to procrastinate and do everything else except for build my website. So I um, launched a whole apparel range. <laughs> Like these are things you need to listen for and think, okay, that's a nudge to that direction. Or like, that's a nudge, like absolutely not. Absolutely no chance do I ever want to do that. So 
those pulls. And what I find as well is often you're kind of like known for something, right? Either like, oh my God, you're really creative or maybe you're good at sewing or like maybe you're the go-to person for something. Everyone has something to offer. And I don't want you to think of this as like, I have to have a product to sell or I have to have a whatever to sell. As you will hear when I rattle these ideas that I'm going to force myself to come up with on the spot, <laughs> um, you're going to see you can literally do and charge for anything. And then the best part about that is actually is you get to try different things. You get like, and this is a big thing of um, Gary V's, right? Is that you literally just try something, try one thing. You know, if you have one dream or like one idea for the love, like, again, just like, just try it. There is absolutely no harm in trying it. Nothing bad is going to happen, like literally. And, you know, having the saying, this, um, a salary is what your employer pays you to forget about your dreams or whatever it is. I probably butchered that. But I, I do disagree because I feel like it, that part of you just lives on a shelf. It's there. It's in the back of your mind always. And how often have you said to yourself, oh, I must do that one day. Oh, I must get onto that. Oh, I must do it. Like we have a billion of those things. Just don't listen to other people. Just listen to your intuition. Do not ignore those little nudges and those little pulls and their little whatever. So that is my wrap up for start your side biz and make money today. So as promised, I now am going to give you some ideas, some inspiration, some thought starters, if you will. Now, it is currently seven o'clock on Monday night and I have been at this since 3.33. So if they're shit, I apologize in advance, but I feel like I just like, yeah. Okay. So here we go. <laughs> you could do gardening for other people. And I'm not talking about a fully fledged, like drive a trailer around with a um, lawnmower and it could be anything, it could be flyers in the post office, handyman work, if you're handy like that. Cleaning other people's houses, again, huge. I love my cleaning, she's the best thing ever. A local tour guide. Did you know that TripAdvisor pays people to be local tour guides? Well, if not, you do now. Airbnb hosting, if you have a spare property or a spare room or whatever. Babysitting. Pet sitting. Even, actually both, Right. Car washing, again, obsessed with my car detailer. He's the best. Uh, you can do things like video production and editing. Have you ever used, not Garage Man, what is it? iMovie. Even I can use that. Homemade beauty products. Man, the rise of scrunchies and wall hangings and beautiful things like that. I am so, I'm so here for. I mean, there's things like Uber as well. Like even Actually, there's like all of those places we can go on and do like transcribing for um, or even dictation for now that I think about it. Even being a virtual assistant on the side for, you know, again, if you are to ask people who are in business, you know, what do you hand, need a hand in doing, I can guarantee you they will probably have a few things. So, again, you can kind of see this whole thing is like there are so many options and so many ways of doing things and in the online space in particular you literally are not short of options like if you wanted to do literally something like um you know freelance writing um even like online tutoring and you know you can get to the other stuff where it's like you want to be a coach or you want to run courses online you want to do things like that obviously that's you know the, the big ones but I just feel like there's the, the smaller ones that people forget about or they don't um she I know somebody who does meal prep and again this isn't her business she just does people that ask her to do it because she's just had that word of mouth she just started by doing it herself posting one picture on Instagram on her personal Instagram and then she had people ask her to do it there are needs for these things okay so and that actually wasn't too bad. I'm actually okay with myself after that. And as promised, I have a very exclusive offer for my podcast listeners. I have just launched. Now, if you're on my coaching page, you'll know. And if you follow my agency, Pink Select Marketing, you'll also know. I have launched my Supercharge Strategy Session. Now, what is that? I hear you ask. It is for the person right? Whether you have a side biz or even you have an idea for a side biz that you are feeling stuck with and you're just not sure what to do next or where to even start. Okay. The heart's wearing off and you're just like resenting what once had you like absolutely unable to sleep because you had a billion ideas running through your mind. Maybe your content creation feels like such a fucking chore now and you're just like desperately searching for your spark of inspiration or for it to feel like it did when you first started or like the light's completely gone off. Okay. And you know, like I've just talked about as well, maybe, you, maybe you've got the idea stirring around, but unclear on how to bring your vision to life, which I have been through all of these things. Oh my God. And first of all, 
it's really easy to get out of that because if you've got the ideas, the execution part's easy once you get rolling. <laughs> but two, you can tap back into the state that you had when you first started. So welcome to the supercharged strategy sesh. So my strategy sessions are usually um, full day workshops that I run um, with businesses. And again, I I love what I what I get out of those days and the kind of like seeing the spark, seeing the, you know, whatever come back to life with businesses that I work with and business owners in particular. This one is a little bit different in that I am also going to be infusing um, a bit of energetics, a lot of mindset stuff as well, because often I find what people are getting stuck with at this point is one, obviously, yes, the, the typical marketing knowledge, that's all fine. But it's when you stop like knowing the next step is when your mind starts to be like, no, we don't want to do this. This is too hard. We don't want to do this. Right. It's like a sm- snowball and it doesn't help anybody. Okay. So when I say the lives will be high after our 90 minutes together, I am not even joking. I have had uh, so many of these calls already. And the like I said, the feeling that I walk away with, like I just, I've got goosebumps in most of them because I'm just like, oh my God, you're just like, go, go, go. <laughs> like I'm going to value bomb you. I'm going to throw a bunch of stuff at you, but you'll walk away with tangible next steps to take action on. I promise you that. And what I'm also going to do again is throw different content ideas at you. So you're going to be like reels, 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 got ideas for reels. How to improve or even create your website. We got you covered there. I can also offer product ideas, right, to put out into the world. I'm really great at being able to extract the problem that you're trying to solve and supporting people in being able to do that, right? We're going from a zero to 100 in your world, however that looks like for you. So, but for real, 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 uh, we only do self-belief possibilities and problems here right? I don't listen to, or I don't subscribe to, you don't have enough time in the day. Uh, there was a reason that I was the proud facilitator of the morning girl movement because I created the time and you can too. So if you're ready to take your biz to the next level, you need this offer. Now it's 197 currently for, um, my clients. However, because I love you guys so much, and every time I see that somebody downloads this podcast, it gives me the most amazing feeling. I'm giving you 50% off. That is 98.50, right? So what are you going to ask me? What can I do with this time? 90 minutes, Megs. What are we going to do? You want to build a website? Awesome. We'll do that. You want to raid, run a paid ads campaign on social media? Awesome. We'll do that too. You want to improve your SEO and Google rankings? Whether you're like, yeah, hell yeah. Or you're like, what the fuck is that? Got you covered. Do you want to inspo for an, a next campaign? I've got you there. Do you want to work out who your audience is? That's a lot of fun. I'm happy to help out there too. Grow a Facebook group. Get entertaining reels idea. Again, my favorite <laughs> my favorite space to play in because every reel I look through, I'm like, oh, I could create that idea. I might do that idea. And like my biggest bugbear of my clients, I swear, is like when I'm just like scrolling through reels randomly looking for inspo and like, oh, this would be great for you. Like you should do all this. This would be great for you. Like do all that. And I was just like, oh my God, like is she seriously messaging me again? <laughs> but I can't help it. Um, and also looking at analytics and translating all of the bloody acronyms that come with working in marketing into normal speak. We're going to translate it. So let's fucking do it. So I just see people struggling and it's just not necessary or beneficial. So I am here to help you. I am completely at your service. I will leave the link in the show notes on how to take up this offer. Um, I am running these until the end of December. And this is such a great time to get yourself ready for 2024, whether you're feeling stuck and you want to like absolutely race into the new year, or you're not sure what you're doing or what you want to bring to life and you're ready to go ham in the new year, then this is for you. So as I said, pink select marketing, uh, supercharged strategy sesh, unmatched. The vibes are higher. We're creating cool stuff. We're getting offers out there. We're removing any limiting beliefs. We're doing all the fun things. Everything that I love nothing more than to do. <laughs> All right. As I mentioned, yes, only until December. Um, I think I finished up on like the 23rd or I don't even know, um, someday in December, but it's all on the website, which I'll leave you the link to. So what's not the vibe for this week? I haven't noted anything down because I was kind of like going to roll with my last like side hustle idea and that rolled off. So what is not the vibe of this week? is not pursuing our dreams, not pursuing our goals, not pursuing things that make us feel really, really good because like for whatever reason, there's a billion reasons we don't do it, okay? So on the flip side of that, what is the vibe? Is following our dreams, 
chasing it, not even just follow them, chasing them, literally attracting all the things we want to ourselves by being so excited about life and so excited to wake up in the morning that the vibes are that fucking higher, that the universe is like, woo, all right, calm down. Like I'm bloody coming. I'm coming to the party because I've got to tell you, but again, based on my own experience, once you open that floodgate, she don't stop. And it's the best thing ever. <laughs> so have a wonderful rest of your day, your morning, your evening, whatever time it is that you're listening to this. I love you so much. Go and take up the offer before it's gone. 50% off. You know what? Share the code with everyone. I don't even care. I just want to meet you guys. I want to help. I want to create a space where you're just like walking away from that, like mind blown. I didn't take enough notes. I'll record it for you so you can have it after. <laughs> and then you're just going to execute. You're going to action in 2024. It's the year of the no longer side bits, mate. We're taking this seriously. I love you so much and I will see you in the next episode.